Okay, so we've got a 2001 Yamaha Phaser, and you could probably see from that clip that I just ran, it's not sounding too good at the rear end. I've taken the hugger off, it's absolutely filthy over here. I'm getting a clunk, clunk, clunk noise. Can't quite tell if it's just uh, an overstretched chain that has just now got some really bad geometry making a horrible rattle, but I'm getting a clunk, clunk, clunk noise. You couldn't really hear it too well there. I was hoping that was going to come out a little bit better. But when you're under load, at low speed, you're getting a definite clunk, clunk, clunk noise. And I just think the wheel bearings are shot. So it's either the wheel bearings or maybe there's something wrong under here where the front sprocket is, maybe in the transmission. But it doesn't do it um, either when the bike's in gear and the clutch is pulled in or if it's in neutral. Uh, so... I don't think I've got a problem. I think I've just got a problem really chain sprockets, wheel bearings, and I do need to change the pad on the rear as well. Pads. Doesn't look overstretched because uh, still got some more movement on that adjuster. But anyway, I do think it's a wheel bearing issue. I think that bolt has to come all the way out. Yeah. Alright, that still doesn't seem to be room. <laughs> Use a five mil Allen socket rather than a key because uh <coughs> one minute. <coughs> yeah these might be a little tight. <coughs> but they're not. don't need to take off the um, clutch cable or adjuster or anything like that. That was a bit oily but I guess that's just a bit of road muck. A bit of chain fling, all that kind of stuff. But Assuming those are all the same length. If they're not, we'll uh, soon mark their positions. Yeah, they're the same. They all seem the same. Yeah. Let's see if this just pops off or whether it needs wrestling. I guess it's going to be. A bit of a wrestle because you've got the uh, end of the clutch changer there. Hang on a minute, I think there's some more. I was looking at that bolt there, but no, that's uh, presumably the water pump and it's not connected to this, so uh, I just need to get behind this and pull it, I think. <laughs> it's fast, it's stuck really fast. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be that, it's grabbing it. Yeah, I think I've missed one. I think there's one in there, which I won't be able to use that socket for. Let me go and get one of my long reach ones. Right, my long reach ones um, won't go down the hole, so I'm going to have to use an Allen key. And that's got a ball end, so I'm not absolutely sure that's going to work. In fact, I don't even think that's going in. Maybe it's a smaller one. Oh, that's not working. Let's try an even smaller one. Uh, something's not right here. I wonder if there is 
poking down the hole, as best as I can see, there's something down there, but I can't definitively see that there's like a little Allen head on the end of on the end of a bolt. So in the manual it's showing there's a bolt there, but then in the manual it's uh it's actually showing the YZF model, the Thundercat, this is the phaser F Z S. So maybe there isn't one there. It's a different type of cover, but uh not sure where that would go if it was there because it's right in between the chain. Don't know. Let's see if we can give this a bit of a climb. If it doesn't want to move at all, then there's a good chance there is another bolt on this. By all, uh, yeah, by all counts, I think. That's absolutely solid. I don't think that's going to move. I think there is a bolt down there, but I can't see what sort it is. Right, just been doing a bit of searching and sourcing. Yes, there is a, a bolt there, a fifth bolt, but it's not recessed down in that hole. It's missing, so the bolt head should be right here. So, uh, <laughs> clearly mine is just really stiff, so uh, probably just going to need to give it a bit of a, a wiggle and what have you. Ugh. But, I mean, blimey, it's so stiff, it's just not even budging. Um, corrosion, and, you know, it could just be the uh, the little seal there's grabbing, that kind of thing. So, uh, let's get a, bit of, let's get a bit of WD-40 on it, let it soak for a second. I had the exact same issue when I was trying to pull the uh, covers and things off my VF750 engine that I'm still repairing. To want to move, and then all of a sudden it just freed up. Yeah, <laughs> be careful I'm pulling this and the bike's on the stand. I've got to sit on the stand though, so. Hammer. Oh, there you go. That's wiggling now. Okay. It wasn't even wiggling before. Now it's wiggling a bit. So. Uh... <coughs> but... you can't get a good handhold round all points. I think that's the issue. Uh, the bits you can get your hands round it just ends up pivoting the thing against something that then grabs it. <laughs> very filthy. doesn't want to move. <laughs> uh, try and prise it away. Just get some sort of pivot point this side. There's literally nowhere to hold it this side otherwise. Mm, I can't even get anything in there. thread in there is there no no the threads right back in the case so I can't use a thread 
of a wooden thing like that. <laughs> See it kind of trying to move there. Usually all it is is just that spline that's kind of yeah. And there's possibly a paper gasket or something behind it. Ah, oh. I think that just came away. There you go. See, I told you it'd be easy, didn't I? I told you it'd be no problem whatsoever. Didn't I say? Didn't I say that the whole time? So there was a dowel at the top as well. That would have been grabbing. But oh my God, look at the state of this. I mean, sprocket covers have always been a bit of a catch tank for oil and roebuck, but that has not been off in 20 years. I've had the bike about mm, eight months. But there doesn't seem to be any particular free play that's of any significance. Like that's just normal. It's in gear. Of course, I've got the clutch cover off over there, so I can't change gear because the um, cable's all integral to that. I'm not even sure if you can see in the centre there the actual push rod. See if I can pull that out. There you go. There you go, back in. But that all seems okay. But you can see those uh, teeth on that front sprocket are really pushed over, so uh, that's really worn out. That needs replacing for sure. So, front rear sprockets, um, chain, wheel bearings, rear pads, and a proper clean. just in desperate need of a new chain. Gould knows how long that's been on there, but it's probably just overstretched for the tight spots. So I've got a new chain front rear sprockets on order, new wheel bearings, because out on the road, this makes one hell of a clatter. Uh, sounds like something's about to come crashing off anyway. So get all that done. I could do the rear brake pads as well. Oil and filter. And of course, clean up that uh, horrible mess inside that sprocket cover. So, yeah, okay, well, let's uh, get this chain off anyway. Oh, and I need to replace that missing sprocket cover bolt, so I've got some of those on order as well. I think that's it. Front pads are fine. Well, this is altogether going to be a little more difficult, I think, because uh, I can't remove any parts off the bike to clean, but I'll do my best. Oh, my days. This is the uh, clutch push rod. I really don't want to be pushing any rubbish into there. <laughs> this is horrible. See what I can scrape off before I start brushing it clean. Yikes. Take this chain off now and the sprocket, obviously, and that way um, 
So I don't want to be wasting my time if I take that off and it's so filthy we only need to get this cleaning fluid out again. So let's get this chain off. Uh, I'm just going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it from the rear sprocket end because that way it won't move while I'm grinding it. like an x-ring to me a squashed x-ring <laughs> okay gear now so that should uh, whiz off easily. Right, believe it or not I do not have a 32 millimeter socket which is ridiculous. So I do have a box wrench 32 mil so I shall use that. <laughs> this is not tight at all. To get a 32 mil socket by to uh, whiz it back up. Okay. Right. sprocket cover but uh, to be honest it could still do with a good deal of work this is a lot better than it was I've got rid of all the massive chunks of muck and grease and just about giving it as good a clean as I can but uh, I'm gonna let it all dry off before I put anything back
Anyway, just need to take the sprocket off, remove the carrier, change all three bearings, and then this side's all good to go. The brake disc is in decent shape, so that doesn't need replacing. But these pads have had it, so I shall be replacing those. Right, let's get the sprocket off before we do anything else. finger a minute ago so it's making it hard to hold a spanner. These aren't too tight so that's good. There you go. What size was that? Just a 14 mil. see any markings on there but we'll give it a clean and see well I just, I just need to make sure I've got the right size sprocket you can see this one's had it the teeth are leaning over okay so um, maybe what I need to do is just slip that back on with a couple of nuts so I can uh, use it to remove the carrier. Ooh. Ooh, that's a bit tight. Okay. <laughs> it's really should just lift straight out. I don't know what's uh, up with this. But it's a good sign in the sense that um, you know these things are normally really, really loose, and uh, you know you're sort of in need of replacing the rubbers. But I'm kind of wondering if that has been done recently. Just let that soak in a little bit. Can't imagine it's going to do any harm. Oil penetrating fluid. I think I've gone all the way around. I'll give that a minute or two. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway, I'll pull those out and then we can sort this bearing out of this end and the other end and carrier there. So yeah when I was uh, pulling apart my VF 750F engine I made this uh, little hook out of 3mm steel sheet just to attach to my uh, little puller so that's coming handy. See there where that spacer tube is kind of pushed right over so I can hit the bottom edge of that bearing now. Just takes a 
it just takes a little bit of persuasion, that's all. It's properly tight in there. very loose now so that's definitely moving so I should just be able to keep wiggling that around from side to side of course the issue you'll face is that when you turn it upside down it it, it drops to the bottom so you're constantly uh, making it um, get in the way as it were so anyway let's keep going if we can move this across hit the other side Spacer tube. Very rusty looking to boot. So look how rusty that is. That's uh, going to need a good, good bit of a clean out before we put anything back. So if you look down the end, I'm not sure you can see. Um, there you go. Uh, that's the inner race of the bearing on the other end. So you can see without the spacer tube in there, now we can just knock that straight out, no problem. And you can imagine what this looks like on the inside if it's that rusty on the outside and that does feel quite notchy so uh, bearing on this side should come out a lot easier as we saw I just need to remove this old dust seal even a slightly bigger screwdriver Um, aluminium oxide so that's coming off of the, uh, the actual hub there we should have just enough clearance with these battens to uh, allow that bearing to drop out and down without resting the disc on the, the actual bench itself so okay here's a plan uh, that's what I would have pulled it with except that won't go through the hole but it will sit perfectly behind it and it will drop down that hole and oh yeah it's too short okay and screw that in it's fine and then use the uh, bar of the slide hammer Threads. Now that should give us a proper good even little surface area to work on. Every tool's got a hammer end. Oh my god, that looks worse than the other one. This end of the hub doesn't look anywhere near as bad as the other, but uh, you know, still all needs a good clean up, but the other side was yeah, pretty bad. Just need to sort the carrier out now. Let's pull that dust seal off. At least you don't have to worry about damaging anything because uh, it's all coming out. Unlikely to do anything to the hub. Probably stuck in there. I could probably, to be fair, just drive the bearing out and it would come with it. So, yeah, not normally like this, but okay, just 
you see the mess it's in, can't you? Very gaunchy. And the hub itself for the uh, sprocket carrier is all right, so this will just all need a little bit of a clean up before we put the bearings back in. Right, so uh, I think four and a half mils the service limit. Four mil. That can't be right. So if you, well, if you've got such a lip on there, I've got to open the thing right up to get it back off. But um, that is looking like that's about four mil. The service limit's four and a half. I'll just check both the front. They're absolutely fine. As in, they're right on the service limit actually. But they're actually really good discs. They're both three and a half mil which is on the service limit, so they'll need replacing at some point, but there's no kind of scoring on them or ridges or anything like that, so they've done, they've worn quite evenly, so I won't replace those. This one's actually looking quite bad, and it's well below the service limit, so uh, definitely going to renew that. Uh, especially as I'm putting new brake pads on, because that's going to wear those out in no time otherwise. Anyway, I'm going to give this end of the hub a little bit of a clean, or this side of the hub, I should say. Uh, this is the bit inside the uh, sprocket carrier, which is looking pretty rusty. Um, but the, the actual sprocket carrier hub part itself was fine, and the other side of this wheel seemed to be okay. So it's just really this side that needs a bit of a clean up. But I'm going to leave that disc be for now because. Uh, that looks like uh, more trouble than it's worth. Anyway. Right, so the hubs are all ready for the bearings now. Um, so that's uh, next job, but uh, slight rethink. I am definitely replacing this uh, disc. There's no way that is going to go through an MOT. It's too ridged, it's well below spec, and I need to try and get it out. So I've ordered a new one, I've ordered all new fixings, and um, if I can't get it out, I'll just leave it, I'll carry on. Um, and uh, get the bike back up on the road with all the new bearings, chains, sprockets, etc., brake pads, what have you. And I'll take the bike down the garage and get them to do it. But I've got new brake disc and all the fixings on order, so there's no harm in me giving it a try now. So, so that was the uh, six mil one that was rounded out. 
I think I think that's all that happened to the others when I try them. So uh, let's get a special socket in there. See if we can do something with it. Um, yeah. So these are, these are basically just the same sort of size sockets, but they've got a twist on them. So uh, it's a little bit like a taper, really. So the more, the further it goes in, the uh, more of a bite it gets. It's actually a quarter inch socket, so that should go on there just nice. Um, three eighths drive. Give it a little bit of heat and uh, maybe we've got a bit of a bond issue possibly, they might have gone in with Loctite. Sense that my uh, gas is running out here. Right underneath. <laughs> anything I think that answers the question snap the head off the top of my bit but on a positive note it didn't slip so that kind of just tells me I need to get something a little stronger there's enough material there to give it another try so because that little bit that snapped off it's got a little bit of a neck there so it's obviously a bit of a weak point but also the trouble with this is the fulcrum is is like you know what 10 centimeters up there it kind of needs to be right down here really to get the best chance of a uh, maximizing the uh, torque and what have you um, let's give it another try but I'm not sure this is one of the things where it probably be a better when it's done on the bike really Ah. No, that just slipped. But at least it didn't snap again. This is a quarter inch hex socket. So let's see if that gives us anything. Okay, skipping forward, this has got to come off, or more importantly, I cannot use this disc, and as you can see, what I'm trying is just rounding out. So I think the only thing that's going to get these bolts out are uh, sort of heat and welding nuts on and that kind of thing, and that probably will work, but there's six of them, one or more, probably going to shear off, it's going to... Be more work than it's worth I think and on top of that I do need a new tyre because I mean always difficult to tell with a motorcycle but this is very squared off I could probably show you if I position it better yeah very squared off new tyre is going to cost well over a hundred quid fitted so I went on the old flea bay and I found this and it's got practically a brand new tyre unused and all the bearings intact I've tested them sticking the spindle in they look and feel pretty good if I flip it round you can see the disc 
has already been removed. I've got a new one on order, I'm just waiting for the bolts. It cost me less than 80 quid from Germany, including delivery. So in this instance, it just turns out it was more economical to replace the wheel, along with what looks like a brand new, practically, tyre. The new disc is around 5mm. I'm just waiting for the new bolts, as I mentioned. I hope they turn up quite soon. They seem to have been lost in the post somewhere. ordered them about two weeks ago, and I've had to try and resource some new ones, but they are not going to turn up in time to get this all back together in time for Easter and getting the bike out on the road for a bit of a ride out. So um, I shall just have to get on with what I can get on with now, which is doing the rear brake pads. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to rebuild this new wheel back up with new bearings because the ones that are on there seem perfectly okay. So I'm just going to give them a bit of a road test and see how they're doing. If they're no good, I will put all the new bearings in. I've still got to do the front, of course, but for now, I'm going to get on and do the brake pads on the rear. Mm -hmm.